Hello everyone. Welcome to our uh, YouTube channel TechLT1. So today we are going to discuss one of the important topic in uh, telecommunication or wireless communication systems, uh, which is called cyclic prefix. And this has been widely uh, used in um, uh, systems like 4G and 5G wireless communication systems, wherever they employ OFDM uh, systems, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing systems. So they use cyclic prefix in order to reduce the interference that is caused due to multipath fading. So as you know, the multipath fading uh, can occur due to you know various environmental uh, issues uh, between your UE and the uh, uh, I mean G node B or base station, right? So you have, for example, you have some uh, buildings uh, that is actually interfering with your uh, signals that is being sent from G node B to the uh, base station towards the UEs, there might be possibility that, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, interference uh, due to multipath effect can cause uh, your signal to receive at different time intervals, right? So this causes a lot of interference and um, uh, at the UEs, at the receiver side, whenever it tries to process or decode the uh, information that is transmitted by the base station, okay? So how does basically cyclic prefix help in order to solve the multipath path fading effects onto the uh, receiver side, right? So, this is some background about cyclic prefix. Uh, so let's talk more about the technical details, uh, how this cyclic prefix is implemented in real time. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, what is a cyclic prefix? prefix right? So a cyclic prefix CP, you can call it short, is a uh, portion that is copied from end of an orthogonal frequency division multiplexing symbol and the that is being inserted at the beginning before any transmission of your data okay so as you recall um, in a OFDM system okay so it consists of for example 5g OFDM system right so it consists of complete resource grid um, if you consider in the time domain right and the frequency domain your resource grid consists of basically um, 14 symbols in a slot okay so it has been right, and in the frequency domain, each uh, resource block will be called as uh, uh, twelve subcarriers or one way of DM symbol. Okay, so you have zero to thirteen way of DM symbol in a slot, right? And that slot duration can vary depending upon your subcarrier spacing. This is frequency, and uh, 12 subcarriers in the frequency domain and one symbol in the time domain will together will be called resource block, right? So um, what we are doing as part of cyclic prefix is that the symbol, uh, for example, your symbol duration will be something like uh, your cyclic prefix and the symbol duration, okay? So what we are doing basically, uh, we are taking some portion of the uh, symbol uh, information from the end, right? whatever is there, that we are keeping it at the start so that you can clearly identify um, the information. I mean, if there is any interference that is caused over this symbol, can be replaced this particular uh, cyclic prefix in order to you know uh, suppress the effects of uh, your uh, uh, multipath fading onto your uh, symbols, right? So symbols is nothing but is the um, time uh, duration where you, you will be basically uh, transmit the data within this particular symbol, right? That is a traditional uh, OFDM symbol. So, um, as you see here in this diagram, the total symbol consists of uh, your cyclic prefix and the actual usable symbol duration, as you see here. And uh, so, uh, the portion of, for example, the, the data that is being transmitted over this symbol is something like this, okay? So, for example, it's a kind of sinusoidal waveform, let's assume. And the portion, this particular end portion is being added in the front of that symbol before being transmitted. And that will be acting as your cyclic prefix, okay? So that is the overall concept of uh, what is cyclic prefix and why it is required, right? That is important. We know that how it is implemented, but 
what is cyclic prefix we know but how why is it required right so as i said like uh, in a wireless communication systems uh, you generally affect uh, the you know receiver with multiple path uh, propagation because of environmental uh, uh, considerations or the you know uh, real time environment uh, buildings or stuff like that so which causes different paths at the receiver side with the delayed uh, versions of the original transmitted signal right so this um, this causes mainly two problems at the receiver side uh, for example you have the base station here okay and um, this is caused by uh, due to some multi path uh, uh, interference okay at the receiver side and this basically this basically causes some kind of interference onto your receiver side so like this you you may be receiving multiple uh, signals onto your ue right so um, okay so this uh, due to this there are two types of problems or interferences that occur most widely in the wireless systems one is called intersymbol interference that means overlapping the of symbols due to multipath delays so the generally there will be a time shift whenever the, so for example this is been received at t0 this dead path and this uh, reflected path is our multi path other paths from the reflected uh, buildings let's assume so that will be received at t1 so t1 if it is greater than t0 so there is a, obviously some delay at the ue when it is decoding the signal right so like this you will have different time intervals where uh, your system is being uh, transmitted okay your system is transmitting the signal so that is causing um, i mean the delay that is uh, you know symbols that is arriving at the receiver due with the uh, multiple multiple delays can cause intersymbol interference whereas intercarrier interference due due to this uh, you know multiple uh, signals being uh, uh, received at the ue so there might be possibility that uh, the your uh, you know uh, multiple sub carriers is make lose orthogonality which is very much important for your ofdm systems right so ofdm operates multiple sub carriers being orthogonal right so if you are losing orthogonality there might be lot of interference for the sub carriers with each other right so these are the two uh, important problems that occur whenever there is in uh, multi path uh, propagation uh, impact these are the impacts uh, of, on the system okay so how do we solve this that is the solution is cyclic prefix okay so now we understood why cyclic prefix is required okay and let's see how how we have to calculate the cyclic prefix duration we know that we are going to add some portion of the symbol from the end uh, usable symbol from the end and add it so what should be the exact duration that we need to add as part of your cyclic prefix right so that is given by the uh, 3gpp formula for cp length cyclic prefix length okay so as you see um, uh, there are some two types of cyclic cyclic prefix that is defined in 3gpp one is extended cyclic prefix and the one is normal cyclic prefix okay so in case of uh, the normal cyclic prefix okay the formula was given something like this the length of the cp should be 144 multiplied by the constant called k we'll discuss what is that k and 2 to the power of iphone mu which is uh, mu is representing for your numerology okay uh, in 5g systems as you know like we have different sub carriers facing so you you have to uh, you know the duration of your cyclic prefix will vary depending upon your sub carrier spacing right so that is um, so all these formulas have been defined uh, like this so a basic concept here like extended cyclic prefix and normal cyclic prefix is mainly um, the extended cyclic prefix is used during um, um, when you need larger cp uh, duration compared to uh, whatever is being there for normal okay so in case of extended cp you will have higher cp duration this is to uh, you know uh, make sure that you have um, completely avoid the ica and uh, isa interference onto the system so basically you are giving more uh, duration so that any impact to this actual original symbol will be 
uh, taken care by this CP, okay, uh, CP duration. But in case of normal, it, this CP duration would be little less compared to extended cyclic prefix. So that's why um, in a, a slot, if you are using extended cyclic prefix, you can use only 12 OFDM symbols, okay, in the time domain. And uh, this is for extended cyclic prefix, okay. Whereas in normal cyclic prefix, okay, you can use 14 OFDM symbols, okay. So that is the difference between like normal CP and extended CP, okay. So depending upon the type of cyclic prefix you are using, your CP length will vary, okay. And we talked about uh, the constant K, right. So K mainly is the ratio of your symbol duration between your LTE system, TS, is LTE timing unit, okay, and the TC, right, this is 5G NR timing unit, okay. So this is the constant between uh, your uh, LTE timing unit and the uh, uh, 5G NR uh, timing unit, generally this value is a constant around 64, okay. How do we calculate that? So for example, TS, uh, so this is the formula for uh, LTE basic time unit. So it is one uh, upon delta F for F, which is nothing but subcarrier spacing, reference subcarrier spacing, and the FFT size of your uh, uh, system, right? So that will be constant again at 2048 because of uh, the LTE maximum bandwidth is around 20 megahertz, right? So this comes down to 32.5582 nanoseconds, right? This is LTE timing unit value. Okay, and but whereas in, um, in case of 5G, the timing unit is measured uh, with one upon delta F max multiplied by FFT size of your 5G system. So as you know, the max subcarrier spacing that is supported in uh, 5G is 480 kilohertz, right? So if you substitute that value along with the FFT size, which is 4096 for uh, 5G, so this comes down to 0 0.509 nanosecond. So if you Take the ratio, the value will come down to 64, right? That is the uh, meaning of the value k. So if you substitute all those parameters and then calculate the CP length, you will, will basically know what is what should be your CP duration in the time domain. Okay. So this is how this is the formulas involved in your uh, uh, CP calculation. So mainly, um, so that's about uh, what is how do we calculate the CP duration in order to uh, uh, get I mean, make your system optimal for your reducing the uh, interference, okay? So let's discuss some uh, basic differences between LTE and 5G NR, okay, in terms of cyclic prefix, okay? So uh, as you know, the, there are two types of cyclic prefix, both in LTE and 5G NR, there's no change here, okay? And the CP length for the normal uh, cyclic prefix length is generally, um, it is 4.7 uh, microseconds. This will be the symbol duration, okay? And 5.2 is only for first symbol, right? As I said, like uh, there are 14 symbols. In LTE, this will be seven symbols per slot, but in case of 5G, it is 14 symbols. So for each symbol, it will be around 4.7 microseconds, okay? But for the first symbol, the duration will be little more because you are adding another 0.4 um, um, microseconds in case of uh, for the first symbols because of uh, addition of cyclic prefix. Okay, so but in case of 5G and R, this will be as low as 2.34 microsecond, right? So this is half of the whatever you have in LTE, right? So that will actually. Um, you know, is a benefit for your effective use of your uh, cyclic prefix uh, or resources uh, in your time domain, okay? And in case of extended CP length, LTE has around 16.7 uh, microseconds CP length, but here it will be even less, right? For 60 kilohertz subcarrier spacing, which is applicable only for extended CP, which is, it comes down around 4.17 microseconds of CP length, okay? So we are drastically reducing the size of uh, cyclic prefix when you compare with LTE, right? And subcarrier spacing, uh, as you know, it is fixed in case of LTE, but here it is uh, variable, right? You have four numer five numerologies, depending upon that, you can 
um, calculate your cyclic prefix. And in OFDM, the per slot, the number of symbols is seven for non normal, for extended it is six. But whereas in 5G, uh, you have per slot 14 normal CP and 12 extended CP. And deployment uh, perspective, like uh, longer CP value results in uh, larger cells and MESFN cells. Okay. But here, in case of 5G, it, uh, it adopts very well uh, based on your SCS and cell size. Right. You can adopt your CP uh, length as per your uh, uh, deployment model. And there are some uh, special symbols. Uh, in LTE, first symbol is uh, CP will be a little longer. Whereas in case of 5G, the first and seventh symbol will be uh, longer. Okay, so this is basically because of time alignment, timing alignment uh, in 5G and all. The coverage impact uh, for your LTE and 5G and all. So CP uh, cyclic prefix is chosen based on the cell size and delay spread. Okay, and but here the 5G and all the CP is chosen uh, supposed to be more dynamic and uh, depends on. Uh, um, I mean, depending upon your coverage, you can dynamically choose your SCS subcarrier spacing and the cyclic prefix uh, for the better optimization, optimized uh, cell coverage, as well as the throughput. Okay, so that's why it's more dynamic. So this is about uh, the cyclic prefix which uh, we wanted to share uh, this information. I hope uh, you have got some idea on the cyclic prefix uh, in both 5G and RNLT. So keep watching our videos. Thank you.